All right, so way, way too many people over the years have told me that The Hunger Games is a ripoff of Battle Royale, and I feel like most of those people either have not watched Battle Royale, or have not read the book, or they haven't watched The Hunger Games, or they haven't read the books, or they're just kind of dumb, <laughs> to be honest, because uh, lately my video on Hunger, Ga Hunger Games clones and how they work has just been getting more attention like that just happens sometimes on YouTube uh, but it's been getting attention I've been noticing a lot more comments of people saying <laughs> um actually the Hunger Games is a ripoff of something else it's a clone of something else and those people are incapable of observing anything beyond the absolute most basic surface level because the basic premise of Battle Royale in the Hunger Games is the same that's true and Battle Royale did come out first, that's true. But beyond that, they are very, very different stories. And I'm talking like the actual events of the stories themselves are very different. Uh, the types of characters that are in there, the type of world it takes place in, the themes and symbolism of the story, those are all very, very different from Battle Royale to The Hunger Games. And I kind of just <laughs> wanted to make this video so I could try nipping this in the bud once and for all. And uh, I did rewatch the Battle Royale movie last night. I did read the book for it like 10 or 12 years ago, but I am mostly going to be comparing the Battle Royale movie to The Hunger Games, both books and movies, because number one, it allows me to use clips and stuff, which makes things a little bit easier. <laughs> and number two, it just, I, I don't know, the book Battle Royale is not great and it's a little bit more opaque in terms of like themes and stuff. Plus, let's be honest, none of the people who are saying, um, actually The Hunger Games is a ripoff of Battle Royale have actually read the book anyways. I'm one of like six people in the English speaking world who have read it. The rest of you just watch the movie, don't lie. Also, spoilers ahead if that wasn't obvious. But basically, like I said, the actual details of these stories are very, very different from one another, okay? Like, the basic setup is pretty similar, but other than that, very different. Like, The Hunger Games was written by an American. It was created by Americans. And specifically, it was created to comment on American society, because it's a dystopia. Dystopias comment on society. It's not about the future, it's about the present. And The Hunger Games is about, like, the class divide, and it's about American obsession with violent media, and plus it's about how reality TV is really, really fucked up when you stop and think about it. Especially back when the books were first coming out, it was just getting worse and worse and worse over time. It seems to have chilled out a little bit, but we also got MILF Manor this year, so maybe not that much. I mean, I honestly learned a lot from, like, all of that talking. I mean, you did? Everything that's come out of his mouth has been just I'm just wrong. I'm just wrong. And I'm just like... You're welcome. This is your dad. This is your dad. Now, on the other hand, Battle Royale, was the book was written by a Japanese person. The movie was created by Japanese people. And it's about Japanese society and problems that the creators saw with Japanese society. Specifically, it's about how little Japanese culture values its young people. As a basic refresher, The Hunger Games is about a country called Panem, which is... Far in the future, after some sort of apocalypse, it is geographically in what is now the United States, but it's far after the United States has... It's... The United States is gone, basically. Uh, and there, it's ruled by a capital, which is super wealthy and nice, and it has 12 districts, which are all basically just colonies of the capital. And every year, as punishment for a rebellion that happened a long time ago, every district has to send one boy and one girl to an event called the Hunger Games, and they all kill each other and the last one standing wins and gets to go home. And the Hunger Games are a really big spectacle in Panem. Now, Battle Royale, on the other hand, is about a class of Japanese teenagers who were selected at random to kill each other to make them respect their elders. Like, it's... It's not explained super well, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but again, it, it does help with the message that the story is trying to send. Like, the game in Battle Royale is public knowledge, like people know about it, but it's also pretty secretive. You know, they don't have cameras broadcasting everything the way they do in the Hunger Games, and they also don't turn the winners into celebrities like they do in the Hunger Games. Like, the opening scene of the movie shows somebody who just won her game being uh, 
pulled out and getting to go home, and there's a news crew that is trying to get a look at her, but s soldiers are holding them back and not allowing them to interview her. Whereas in the Hunger Games, like, again, it's a big spectacle. They got, they got to go on a victory tour afterwards. And also there's a scene partway through the movie where Kitano, the guy who is running the games, who is played by Takeshi Kitano for... I, I don't know why it's so funny to me to... that They have the same name, okay? It's funny to me. But anyways, there's a scene where he gets a phone call from his daughter and he doesn't tell her what he's up to. He just tells her he's on a business trip, as he puts it. Again, this is public knowledge, but it's secretive. And it's like that because in Japan, again, their society does abuse its young people, but everyone, even though they know about it, they just kind of push it out of mind and try not to think about it, whereas in Panem, the cruelty is front and center. In both Battle Royale and The Hungry Games, the games that the characters are forced to partake in are a means of societal control, and in the Battle Royale book, it's actually not even so much about trying to keep the kids under control as it is just about trying to keep the population under control, like it's the government making everyone fear them, like, it makes even less sense there, trust me. But again, they're, they're both means of control, but in The Hunger Games, it is a display of opulence. You know, because in Battle Royale, the whole thing just takes place on this abandoned island. You know, like, it looks like people used to live there, but they're long gone, so there's just a bunch of, like, rusted out homes and abandoned stuff around, and there's, like, this old school that the game makers are based out of, um, but it's, like, falling apart around them. And they are monitoring the kids, but it's just through microphones. They don't have cameras set up all over the place so they can see everything. Whereas the Hunger Games, they have this massive arena which is purpose-built just for the games. And they build a new one every single year. And it's filled with all kinds of, like, traps and monsters and ways for them to, like, force the kids to fight each other even if they don't really want to. Like, it forces them, you know, out of certain areas or into certain areas and stuff. So, like, it's clear they put so much time and effort into this because, like, again, it's a display of their wealth and a display of their opulence, whereas in Battle Royale it seems almost like an afterthought. Like, it's, it's something they need to do and they just want to get it out of the way, so they're trying to expend as little time and energy on it as possible. And while both stories do take place in a dystopian future, they're pretty different dystopias because one of them is just Japan. It's, like, near-future Japan, or Actually, now it, it would be in the past, because it's supposed to be like right after the turn of the millennium, which was around the time the movie came out. But whatever, that's not important. It's supposed to be just Japan in the very near future, whereas, again, The Hunger Games is a totally fictional country way, way hundreds of years from now. This is kind of a double-edged sword for Battle Royale, because it simultaneously makes it feel a bit closer to the real world, because, again, it's like literally just the, a real government that has evolved to a point where it's doing this, but then it also feels less realistic because it's hard to imagine the Japanese government doing something this over the top with it. Whereas in The Hunger Games, there, there's some separation between the real world and Panem, but also it allows the author to go much crazier with all of the cruelty and everything. And you can see how our current society could eventually lead to that, but it would take a long time to evolve to that point. And then there's all the differences in story. So, Battle Royale almost feels like it doesn't have a protagonist at all. Like, it's kind of unfocused, which I, I know that sounds uncharitable, but that's really the best word I could think of for it. Like, it's, the story is kind of just, uh, these kids get uh, kidnapped, essentially, brought to this island, and they get the rules of the game explained to them, and then the rest of the movie is kind of just them killing each other until the end where something a little bit different happens. Except for this one weird subplot about this one group of kids that tries to build a bomb because one of them, it, like his uncle was a terrorist who tried to blow up parliament and they just want to escape the game without killing people. I... I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of a... It's a strange movie, okay? Uh, but other than that, it'll like just go from one group of kids to another and it'll be like, okay, here's these people, they do something and some of them die. And then these other people, they do something and some of them die. And in some ways, it actually heightens the tragedy of it because we get to know them a little bit more. But it's, uh, again, it does feel uh, kind of unfocused and it feels almost like there is no protagonist, even though there kind of is. 
whereas The Hunger Games is 100% Katniss's story. And, like, yeah, she can kind of see other tributes, like, making alliances and stuff off in the distance, but we as the audience don't really see much of that. It's all left to sort of be, just be implied, because it's really only about Katniss, and everything we're seeing is being seen through her eyes. And then there's the endings, which are, again, very, very different. Partially because The Hunger Games has sequels and Battle Royale does not, at least not that I'm aware of. Like, in Battle Royale, a couple of the surviving kids actually manage to trick the people who are running this game, and then they escape, and they just go on the run, and they're wanted fugitives after that. And I guess the message there is, like, just be smart, and you can outsmart the system, and then you can run away from it, but you can't defeat it. I, I guess that might be the message. Whereas in Hunger Games, uh, Katniss and Peeta decide that neither of them wants to kill the other, so they're going to commit suicide, again, on camera while everybody's watching, uh, which is very against the rules in the Hunger Games, by the way. Like, committing suicide would mean that their families would be horribly punished, so that's why nobody does it. Uh, but anyways, they decide, okay, they're going to commit suicide because they just can't do it, and eventually, they, basically, they're calling the game maker's bluff because the game makers uh, just tell them, okay, fine, you can, you can both live. You both get to go home. Three. Stop! Stop! In a weird way, they did beat the system, but they didn't outsmart it, they just tested their will against the will of the game makers and the will of the capital, because the capital demanded that there be a victor. So the stories here are fairly different from one another, like the actual events that go down are different from one another, even if the basic setup is similar. And then, of course, there is the characters, which are very, very different. <laughs> Like, the types of people that are in both stories are substantially different. Like, again, Katniss Everdeen, the main character from The Hunger Games, is a hunter before the events of the story even begins. So, she knows how to survive the games. Like, when she gets thrown into the arena, like, she would have died if she didn't know how to, like, track, how to survive in the wilderness, how to shoot a bow and arrow. Like, that's all stuff she knew before the story began, and it's stuff that served her well and allowed her to, you know, be victorious in the end. And she also volunteered for the games because her sister got picked and she was like, okay, I'm doing this to save my sister. And she actually goes in expecting to die. And of all of the tributes there, again, there's 24 people there, she only knows PETA. And even then, only a little bit. And over the course of the story, she does kill several people, but she only does it when she's forced to, which is a little bit of a cop-out in my opinion, because while I do like The Hunger Games as a story, it it never really grapples with the morality of Katniss having to kill other kids because all of the other kids that she winds up killing are like psychopaths or actively attempting to kill her at the time. So it, there's never really a point where she has to kill someone who's innocent and begging for their life or anything. Battle Royale is again about an entire class of Japanese students, which is about 40 kids, that are just thrown in unexpectedly. And none of them are prepared for this at all, whereas, again, in The Hunger Games, they knew that the games were coming for several weeks in advance. In Battle Royale, they're just thrown in, have this explained to them, and then they're given a bag with some supplies and sent on their way. Uh, but the only ones that were at all prepared in Battle Royale were these two volunteers, which... It doesn't make sense that people can volunteer in that world. Like, the, the way the game works, how do people volunteer? I have no idea, but okay, <laughs> that's a thing that happened. And they're the only ones that are prepared. And the closest thing to a protagonist that Battle Royale has is Nanahara, and he doesn't contribute all that much. Like, I don't think he kills anyone over the course of the story, and he spends most of it being saved by other people, or being useless, or running away. Like, there's one scene where he attacks some dude to lead him away from his friends, and tries to kill him. He does shoot him several times, but the guy turns out to be wearing a bulletproof vest, so he doesn't actually kill him. In fact, Nanahara really only survives to the end because he just happened to run into Kawada, who is one of the volunteers who went in there specifically because he wanted to, like, defeat the games. It's, uh, again, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense that people can volunteer, but that's what happened. And if he hadn't run into him, he would have died. Like, he, he just, there's not much good that he can do. There, he doesn't have many useful skills. And The Hunger Games does have a love triangle, but it's kind of a fake one with Katniss and Peeta. Uh, just pretending to be in love for the cameras because they think it w will make them look desirable. <laughs> Whereas in Battle Royale, yeah, there is a love triangle between Nanahara, a girl that he likes, and 
one of his friends, but his friend dies right at the beginning of the game, and we don't even know about the love triangle until after his friend is already dead. So we don't know about the love triangle until one leg of it is already gone. So there's not really a love triangle there, is there? In the Hunger Games, there are several characters, several tributes in the games who are depicted as being just completely psychotic and evil, uh, but it's really only a couple of them. Most of them are regular kids, and then there's a couple of career tributes, as they're called, who are kids that volunteered specifically to be in the games and have trained for years and years to reach this point. Uh, but they have actual motivation for doing that, because if they win the Hunger Games, then they get lifelong fame and wealth. Like, it's there's benefit to it for them. Whereas in Battle Royale, there is, th there's a couple of characters who seem kind of psychotic, uh, but most notably is one named Kiriyama, who is the other guy who actually volunteered, and I guess he just likes killing people, because there, there's really no explanation given as to why he volunteered, other than he just, he just wants to go in and kill people. And there are other characters who, again, they seem kind of psychotic, but that's because they all know each other beforehand. Like, again, the tributes in The Hunger Games didn't really know each other, whereas in Battle Royale they've known each other for years. They've gone to school together, they've grown up together, and so some of them have old grievances that they want to settle. And others of them seem kind of psychotic, but really they are just very determined to live. Like, uh, Mitsuko is pretty much the only character in the movie that I was really into. Like, her and Kitano were the only ones that I, I really liked, at least on my most recent rewatch. Uh, but she, Mitsuko was not somebody who, like, wanted to kill people. She was just very willing to do it. And we see she actually has a backstory which explains that, where she was nearly abused by a pedophile when she was a kid. And so she's like, okay, I'm willing to do anything to survive. <laughs> So she is kind of crazy, yeah, but there's an actual reason for it. Whereas other people in Battle Royale, it's just like, they're, they're just crazy just because. And there's actually many people in Battle Royale who commit suicide because they just don't want to kill people or because they're just so horrified by what's gone, gone on and what's going on. And I'm pretty sure that's meant to be a metaphor or commentary or something, however you would put that, for, again, Japanese society, because in Japanese society, they have a very high suicide rate among young people, and part of that is just because of this enormous pressure that all of society, including their elders, is putting on them, which... Again, in Battle Royale, it's just displayed with this game. Like, they're being put into this horrible situation and have all this pressure put on them, and they just kill themselves as an out. And in Battle Royale, the government, the game makers, however you want to put it, they very, very clearly play favorites. Like, Kitano is running things, and he helps Noriko at more than one point. Like, he clearly just wants her to win, and he says as much in one of the final scenes of the movie. Like, and even without that, uh, all of the characters are given weapons, but a lot of them aren't actually weapons. You know, there's characters who are given grenades, and submachine guns, and shotguns, and knives, and hatchets, and stuff. And then there's other characters who are given, like, binoculars, and a pot lid, and a paper fan. Like, th those just blatantly are not weapons, you know? <laughs> like, they're claiming that it's an even playing field while blatantly playing favorites. Whereas in the Hunger Games, they're all more or less on equal footing. Like, you know, Katniss and some of the others are still underdogs, yes, but it's not like the career tributes are thrown into the arena and already are decked out with weapons and supplies and stuff. And that's because, at the end of the day, The Hunger Games is a story about a girl who inspires an entire country, not just with 
the love that she shows for her sister and for Peta, but with the determination and grit and intelligence and everything else that she shows in the arena. She inspires a lot of people, and then she is used as a tool. The story is about life in dictatorships, and it's about how apathy and cruelty towards people are what lead to revolution. Whereas Battle Royale is the story of a group of kids who are completely destroyed by the expectations of their elders. Battle Royale is about life in a suffocating society and how there's really no way to beat it or change it, all you can do is leave. And leaving is very difficult. So yeah, uh, Battle Royale, Hunger Games, very different stories. They have a similar setup. It wouldn't surprise me if Suzanne Collins was inspired by Battle Royale or she had heard of it at least before writing The Hunger Games, but they're not the same thing. It's not a clone. It's not a ripoff. Stop saying it is. It makes you look stupid. Have a lovely day. Goodbye. Hello, everyone. You're still watching? Well, that's pretty cool. You see all these names here? These are my patrons. They're the people that send me money once a month over on Patreon. My $10 and up patrons are Apo Savalainen, Olivia Rayan, Brother Santotis, Buffy Valentine, Carolina Clay, Chib Zahoy, Dan Antselievich, Dark King, Dio, Echo, Flax, James M, Karkat Kitsune, Lexi Delorme, Liza Rudakova, Lord Tiebreaker, Microphone, Mistboy, Mitsimona, Peep the Toad, Roby Reviews, Sad Mardigan, Psych XS, Celine, Sillier the Vixen, Stone Stairs, Tesla Shark, Vevictus, Vimek Zol, and Wesley. Who could ever forget Wesley? And you know what? Thanks, all of you. If you can't afford to, you know, get access, early access to videos and stuff, then that's fine. Just like the video, comment on it, share it around, annoy all your friends with it. You know, that that's cool too. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And uh, if you have subscribed, then I guess like unsubscribe and then resubscribe. I don't know if that does anything, but it makes me feel pretty cool. Anyways, goodbye.